to begin the class session. First of all, subscribe to our channel. I will say to the YouTube audience is to please subscribe and click or uh, whatever it is that you do on the like. Thumbs up so that we can get uh, more uh, exposure, hopefully. to the John Ray channel. <laughs> to click on thumbs up, I like. Anyway, let me say publicly, even though uh, it shouldn't matter uh, that I appreciate um, Mr. Brother Kendall Jagger taking my spot last week to allow me a week off. And actually, I'm off more than a week most of the time. But uh, I mean, not being here. But uh, I, have, I have people tell me all the time that I'm off. Uh, but anyway, uh, Always. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, I'm sure it's said in love, you know. I, I accept it that way, that, that everything is, uh, is, is loving and good. And today we're doing lesson number three in this quarter. Now, uh, two weeks ago, I was here and we did the day of Pentecost. And then uh, that made last week really the beginning of this series of lessons, but it was lesson number two in the quarter. And it was uh, in the early part of the book of Acts. And still today, we're in the early part of the book of Acts, actually three chapters probably more reading than I will get done, so it's probably a good thing that I don't have a clock on the wall. But, um, we'll remind you. Yeah. Uh, when, it, when everybody gets up and leaves, I'll know, I'll know, you know. Well, don't I'll get, pay me attention, because I got to leave real early. I'll, I'll quit when I go. I'll get the me. message, yeah, well, uh, <laughs> Anyway, I, I've noticed also, and I don't remember ever seeing this before, but for three weeks in a row, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 have been in the lesson, have been in the study text. And it's in there today, and that's where we're going to start, is Acts chapter 2. I hope you have your Bibles open and turned with me there. But before I start reading, I want to, as always, point to my maps and give you some indication of, 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 of what uh, I'm going to be talking about. But at Jerusalem, here on that map, or here on this map, uh, these events occurred 50 days after Jesus had gone, uh, I'm sorry, 50 days after he had been crucified, 10 days after he had ascended back uh, to be with uh, the Father. But, but what I want to point out to you is this is a familiar map to you here called Paul's Missionary Journeys. And I've used it many times following these arrows to places where he went. And what I want to be pointing out to you as I read the scripture today is that, that there, the, 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 the gospel had already gone to these places 
before Paul. There was a head start of, I don't know, 10 years, 20 years. Uh, it's, it's a little uncertain in the timeline, in my mind at least, to uh, be able to figure out. Uh, but I know that people from Ephesus, for instance, or from Asia at least, was down here in Jerusalem and Paul had not even been saved yet. So he, he didn't know he was going to be following these arrows and going to all of these places. And I've got this other map over here because it's... Uh, uh, this, part, this map is basically right up in here. So this map covers a good bit more area uh, uh, Persia and Media and, and Babylonia and, and, and Elam and, and they're, they're just a variety of names that are mentioned in the reading today uh, where uh, people from those places were at Jerusalem at Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost when these events occurred. And then they all went back home. They were just, they just had made the pilgrimage to Jerusalem to celebrate the day of Pentecost. And they heard the wonderful works of God spoken in their native tongues. They were Jews, but they were from all these other countries. They had already been scattered, in other words. And we just, we've discussed that before in our, uh, in our series of lessons as we've gone along, how that the Jews had been scattered. And this, of course, is all, uh, the scattering is all before Jesus came. But when Jesus came, he came to kind of bring us all back together including those of us who have been grafted in or adopted. Uh, and that's not, that's not specifically covered in, uh, in the scripture that I'm going to be reading today, but it is true nonetheless. Let's start with chapter 2, verse 1. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all, all 120 of them, with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. What is that I hear? It was a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. All it was was a sound. It wasn't the wind. It just sounded like the wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Now, we know, or we think we do, uh, and, and, and frankly, this uh, matter um, frustrates me. Uh, but there's a lot of matters that frustrate me, so this is not a lot different. Uh, but uh, the upper room was the roof of a house with poles at the corners and a, some kind of a top over it. But it had open sides so that the people down on the street could hear the other tongues that were being spoken up in that upper room. Now, I haven't been there, but I'm told now that when you go to the Holy Land on a tour, they'll take you to the upper room, and it's a fully enclosed room. And, uh, you know, it's just been modernized, is all I know uh, to say about it. Uh, there are other teachers, commentaries, uh, uh, that will point out and say that 
this 120 went down from the upper room and went out into the streets speaking in these other languages. Well, it doesn't say that in the scripture. I, I don't know where they get that, but that that's how they sell books, I guess. I, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, but the indication here uh, is is that it just it just filled all the house, and that means the roof and the lower portion where they were sitting. And verse three says, "And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost." And they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, I want to point out to you something that I've pointed out to you before. I want to repeat. If you will look with me uh, into chapter 1, and I'm not going to try to reteach what uh, Brother Kendall taught last week, but uh, if you look at chapter 1 and verse, starting with verse 7, I don't have time to start at verse 1 or otherwise I would. It says, And Jesus said unto them, and then it's in red, it says, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in all Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. It doesn't say, he didn't tell people that when the Holy Ghost came upon them, they would speak in other tongues. That's just what happened when they were in the upper room in Jerusalem when people from all of these countries and all of these countries were over here celebrating the day of Pentecost. They spoke in the native tongues of those Jews who had traveled travel to Jerusalem to celebrate the day of Pentecost. Verse 5 says that they were dwelling, and I say, this is what I've already been saying, but it says they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Jews devoted, I'm going to change that word there from devout men to devoted. They were devoted men out of every nation under heaven. That's how I know that there was some from all of these places and, and even bigger, probably bigger maps than these. I don't know what the quote unquote known world was uh, at this time. Uh, uh, Probably hyperbole, though. Uh, and and it, it could very well be. Uh, Likely not every nation. Well, uh, the, the ones that were around there, the ones that Which were... It's hyperbole. It's not talking about every nation. It's just generally. The ones where the Jews had been scattered to. And it eventually has turned out to be everywhere. But... At this time, 2,000 years ago, I think it was limited, uh, just as, as, as Tom has indicated here. But it says, now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together, the multitude being the people from all these nations. They came together and they were confounded because that every man heard them, meaning the ones in the upper room, speak in his own language. 
Now, again, I tell you, there are commentaries, people that are supposedly and may be smarter than me will tell you this because the 120 came down out of the upper room and went out and mingled among the street people and, and were speaking in the native tongues of these. I, I don't know that I, that I buy that. It's not in the scripture. But verse 7 says they were all amazed, all of them amazed, and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, look here, are not all these which speak Galileans? Well, they could kind of tell it. The street people on the street could kind of tell it if they were looking up here and seeing all these guys dressed like fishermen that had come from Galilee. Uh, and and they just had a general reputation of being uneducated or less educated and knowledgeable and so forth, so they would not know uh, these are the languages. So at the end of verse seven, it says, "Look here, are not all these which speak Galileans? So how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born?" And then it gives a list of, I think there's, I think 16 places here. You don't have to count them, but there were Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, both Jews and proselytes. There were also Cretes and Arabians and we do hear them, the people in the upper room, speak in our tongues and here's what they were saying. They were saying the wonderful works of God now, what they were talking about was Jesus and his uh, virgin birth and his having come here and having been um, rejected by the church people, uh, the leaders of the, of the church, um, the church people, the common people, the everyday people, the poor people, they, they didn't reject him. They, uh, they liked his message. But the chief priests and, and the underling priests and the uh, scribes and uh, the Pharisees and Sadducees, all those church leaders did not like what he was saying. But these 16, I think, that I read off from different places, we do hear them speak in our tongues. Now, they, they were not talking about Hebrew. They were Jews, but they didn't speak Hebrew because they were speaking uh, the language in which they were born. Verse 12 says, And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying to one another, What in the world is going on? That's, that's the King John Version. Verse 13, Others, mocking, said, These guys are drunk. That's the King John Version. Verse 14, new paragraph, but Peter, standing up with the eleven, he lifted up his voice. Now, him, Peter standing up with the eleven is a pretty good indication to me that the commentaries that say that these 120 people went off down and around the street isn't uh, 
biblical because Peter stood on the on the edge of the roof with his eleven buddies there, and the rest of the hundred and twenty uh, kind of behind them. I'm going to say, even though it doesn't say that in scripture. But he lifted up his voice in verse 14 and he said unto all the people down on the road, on the street, he said, Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem right now because you come from somewhere else to celebrate Pentecost, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. These men are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And then he quotes the prophet Joel starting in verse 17. He says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams and on my servants On my handmaidens I will pour out in those days my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Now let me tell you that that's when the last days began, <clears throat> but the last days are still going on. We've had 2,000, 2,000 years worth of, worth of last days. And so this sort of thing is still um, possible, available. Uh, uh, and, and there are teachers, preachers, who will tell you that they believe that there's going to be a, a humongous revival in the last days and um, my reading of the scripture is that humongous revival has already occurred I just haven't read it to you yet uh, but what's going to happen in the last days from other places in scripture is it's going to be a great falling away there's going to be apostasy in the church there's going to be people who do not give a rip about what the Bible says. They just base their religion on what they heard some preacher or some teacher say. And that's why I challenge you all the time to read the book for yourself. Anyway, uh, in verse 18, he says, I will pour out in those days my spirit. It says the word of in there. I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. That's all my servants and all my handmaidens. Verse 19, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I'm happy to report today that that hasn't changed. <laughs> Whosoever shall call on his name shall be saved. And there's no uh, uh, other requirement. Uh, many will make you believe that you have to be baptized or you have to have the Holy Ghost or whatever. But this just simply says, uh, whosoever shall call on 
his name. Ha. The name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, this is Peter standing on the roof preaching to the crowd that had gathered beneath. And he says, Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you, he was approved among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you. As you yourselves also know, y'all y'all know it. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken him, you men of Israel. See if you go back to verse 22, the beginning of verse 22, he's speaking to the men of Israel. In the middle of verse 21, 23, you have taken him and by wicked hands have crucified him and slain him whom God hath raised up having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Now, there are things in there that uh, give me great hope and that I um, assume things from that Jesus never really died. His soul didn't go in that grave. And my soul and your soul is not going to go in that grave. In that box, and and in the ground, our soul is going to live on, and it's going to go and be with the Creator who created it forever and ever and ever. And so it was not possible, not he would not be holding to it. At the end of verse twenty-four, talking about death. And then it says, verse 25, and Peter kind of shifts gear a little, gears a little bit, but he says, and, and they all knew who David was, everybody that was down there. He had lived a thousand years before them. But uh, Peter says, David speaketh concerning him. And, and this is what he said, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope. Well, his tongue being glad, he was shouting and singing and jumping for joy and doing all of those kinds of things over this relationship that he had with Jesus a thousand years before Jesus came to earth. David knew the Lord. Verse 27. Or did I skip verse 26? No, I, no, I'm at verse 27. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Okay, there again, I'm saying your soul never goes to hell. When, you're, when you call upon the name of the Lord and are saved, go back to verse 21, the middle of the verse, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Go to verse 27, and the Lord will not leave those souls in hell Neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. 
Now that holy one was Jesus, and he didn't he didn't go to hell uh, in the way that we um, talk about people going to hell. I mean, it's uh, in in our culture, and I don't know about. Uh, around the world because I've never been around the world. I've never been to these countries over here. I've just been basically to Oklahoma and Texas, a few other states, but but it's common in our culture uh, when somebody gets mad, uh, they're, they're mad at you, they just will tell you, go to hell. And it's a common it's a common concept that that's uh, that there is a hell, and and they think you've done something bad enough. You just need to go there. Well, if you've called upon the name of the Lord, no matter what that person thinks about you or whatever, they're not the judge, and they're not going to say. Uh, or they're not going to be able to, uh, to say where you're going to go. And verse, again, I'm going to say verse 27. Because thou will not leave my soul in hell. You don't want to, your soul won't ever even go to hell. Well, it's, it's controversial. I mean, some people believe Jesus went down to hell. Well, I don't, out there and that. sure, and I haven't. And they, I, and then, yeah. I, I haven't gotten to that part. Yeah. Uh, that he did go there, and he took captivity. So captivity. You, so you believe he did that? Yeah. So yeah, I don't believe he did. There, there, so there's, then there's, see, it's very controversial. And 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 the, the word hell means Hades, not because hell, Hades is thrown into the lake of fire. Well, so the whole and, concept is is false. And the way most of the public perceives it. And it's talking about Sheol. Sheol, yep, it's a grave. Uh, yeah, so so that. Uh, all of those kinds of things. I'm just talking about what the common conception in our culture is that if somebody gets mad at you, they just tell you to go to hell. Mm -hmm. That's just that's just. The common every, person believes that hell is the lake of fire. Excuse me. The common person believes the hell that hell is the lake of fire. Yeah. Right. But hell means Hades, and it's not the same. Yeah. It's a place of the dead. Hades is a place of the dead, not hell, the lake of fire. That's the misconception. Yeah. Um, we're not going to be able to cover all of that. <laughs> well, you brought it up. You, you brought it up. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's open game when you bring it up. <laughs> well, no, I just said there was all, all, I, all I remember. I don't know what I brought up now, but you started talking about going remember. to hell, and people sent telling you to go to hell. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's the misconception. The misconception is that hell is a lake of fire. And I'm yeah. just saying to you that we're not going to be able to cover all of that today, whether I brought it up or whether I didn't bring it up. That's the, the common concept among the culture that in which we live. And, and that's and why that, I was just clarifying it. So. Yeah, and there's, uh, we're not going to be able to fix that problem. We're not going to be able to uh, fix the government. Oh, yeah, I didn't say we could fix it. I just, I was just making a clarification. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I'm not going to assume that we could ever fix it. I don't care. We don't have enough hours today to fix it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So verse 28 says, Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, talking to the guys down on the street, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David that he is both dead and buried. And his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Now he's just talking about there that 
that there was going to be somebody in David's bloodline that was going to be the king. And all those guys on the street believed that. They were persuaded that, even though they were born in all these other countries. They were taught that by their uh, Jewish parents, and they were taught about David. Verse 31 says, He's seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. He didn't even go. Well, to Tom's point, he went later and brought captivity uh, captive out. Well, I don't believe that, but yeah, some people. Well, that, that's the, the, the common understanding that the uh, people who lived in the Old Testament who believed and trusted in God um, were in some place that Paul, I'm sorry, that, that Jesus went to and brought them out to be in heaven. I'm just saying I interpret that scripture you're referring to differently. Okay. I used to interpret it that way, but so you know, I'm just saying that the captivity captive. I think he's talking about the people of that time that he was preaching to. So I, I'm not, and I know I'm just I mean just because you were saying that I believe that I don't believe that. But go ahead. I'm sorry. I don't believe that he went down to hell and preached to the people in hell. Okay. So I, that's all I'm saying. I mean it's okay. Mm-hmm. Verse 32, this Jesus, this Jesus, this Jesus, the one I've been talking to you about, Peter said, this Jesus hath God raised up, whereof we all are witnesses. Uh, what he's saying there is that every one of you have seen him. Uh, we've all seen him. We know he was raised from the grave in which he was put. Verse 33, Therefore being by the right hand of God and being exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shed forth this. Now this is that that ye now see and hear. Well, that was the um, uh, the fire that sat on each of them, the sound of the wind, and the speaking in their native languages. And he says, David is not ascended into the heavens, verse 34, but David did say, Himself, he said this. He said, The Lord said unto me, or unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly. Now, the house of Israel includes the Jews that were from all of these other countries. They were of the house of Israel. Verse 36, Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made that same Jesus whom ye have crucified. God has made him both Lord and Christ. Verse 37, he was, Peter was through with his sermon or his talk. And he says, now, he being Luke who wrote this, says, now, when all the people on the street, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart And they said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, 
every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, the gift of the Holy Ghost is power to witness for him, to talk about him, about your experiences with him, about what he has done for you in your life. Uh, it, it, it's... Uh, uh, it's a gift that comes uh, when you repent for the remission of your sins. Verse 39 says, For the promises unto you, that was the people back uh, at roughly at the year uh, 40, the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now that indicates that, again, the last days are still rolling. The last days haven't come to an end yet. But it sure looks like they will soon. Verse 40, And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. A new paragraph. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Wow. That grew from 120 to 3,000. Just in a matter of a few minutes of Peter uh, saying these things that he said. And they, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together. And they had all things common, and they sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Now, I want to, it, it doesn't say so here. I just, uh, from elsewhere, as I read it, it comes through to me that the priests, the high priests, the Sadducees, the Pharisees, the scribes, and all of that, that couldn't have been, if you look at verse 46, it says they were continuing daily with one accord in the temple. I can't imagine that the priests were happy about that. The priests and the scribes and, and all these that I've mentioned. Uh, but these were the... the celebrants, the common people who um, who accepted it. Uh, and, 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 uh, and what they were doing in the temple were, verse 47, praising God, and they had favor. Everybody liked one another. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Let's continue with chapter 3. Now, Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. That would have been 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 
and a certain man lame, lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes with, or upon him with John, said, Look on us. So the guy gazed on them. He gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, much to the guy's disappointment, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And Peter took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And by now he had overcome the disappointment from not being able to receive anything from Peter and John because he was now walking and leaping and praising God. Verse 10 says, and they, the people, well, verse 9 says, all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they, all the people, knew that it was the guy that was usually laying out there at the gate begging. They knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, that would be kind of an indication that they had a group of there, that this guy was just, and I expect he was holding them tight. But it says in the middle of verse 11, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's. So Solomon's porch on the temple. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have that illustration to show you today, but. Uh, you could get into the temple from four different sides. And one side, uh, the doorway, the, the, the way there was called Solomon's porch. Verse 12, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people. He said, you men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? It was the God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob. The God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate. When he was determined, when Pilate was determined to let Jesus go. But you denied the Holy One and the Just One. And you desired a murderer to be granted unto you. And you killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in his name, hath made this man that had been laying by the beautiful gate, had made him strong, whom you see and you know him. Yeah, the faith which is by him hath given him his perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I wot 
not that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he has so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restoration of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto like unto me. Moses was saying like unto me. Well, Moses had delivered them from the, from their captivity and now he's saying this prophet is going to be raised up. He's talking about Jesus Christ. Him at the end of verse 22, Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. Him shall ye hear. That means pay attention. Listen. Read his word. Verse 23. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yeah. And all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after Samuel, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and he's quoting Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, in turning away every one of you from his iniquities. So he's saying there to these people 2,000 years ago that you have the privilege of being the first ones. Look at verse 26 at the beginning. He says, unto you first. God, God gave it to you guys first. Well, uh, I don't know if I'll be last or not. I just, I just want it, uh, I just want it, want it to happen, uh, you know, in my lifetime, uh, if if I can, just as this happened in their lifetime. And I think, uh, even though we have all of chapter 4 pretty much left that I might as well stop here and just ask if there are any comments or thoughts or uh, questions or whatever it's Hayes your uh, 200th video say again it's your 200th video today alright so, and, uh, and you agreed with me again today That's yes good, I did yeah so, that's always you know, one of the things that's uh, when, when when you were reading it today, I noticed that, and you said something that kind of made me think more about it, and I kind of think the opposite of what you're kind of saying, but he's speaking to the men of Judea when he's standing up there in the upper room and he's shouting down to them that it would probably be more the people who did speak Aramaic or 
again, that would probably have a more of a problem because the people of the other countries seem to be more, you're already shaking your heads, I haven't finished yet. <laughs> Let me finish. Uh, oh. There would have been more of the men of Judea that wouldn't have heard the other tongues because they maybe can't speak those languages. Now, oh. I don't think it's only them. Don't get oh. me wrong, I'm not trying to say it's only them. Oh. I'm saying generally the, the, the people that were opposing it are the people that were saying that these men were drunk that probably were mostly Judeans. Uh, so um, I'm not saying uh, all the people that the, all the people over there were from everywhere, obviously, because there's some time must have transpired because they're saying, "Hey, all the other people from all these countries are hearing it in their lang- native lang- tongues too." So there's, but the people of Judea that only spoke Aramaic, let's say, for instance, they might have just heard it as dribble, you know, as just nonsense. But also, you could say, well, those are the people that were probably not going to be saved. I think also well, too, because if they couldn't hear it, they probably wouldn't hear the the, the tongues or that the wonderful works of God. So only some of the people are going to hear those w- wonderful works of God. So I mean, it could, but it's a, I I could see it both ways that there's a combination of that, where before I always seen it. I'm just telling you this this way. I always seen it that only the people that heard it where the people were saved. But today I think it could be a little bit of combination of both, of people who just don't speak other tongues, so they wouldn't have benefited from that. Benefited from that. But it's people from all nations. There's no doubt about that. There's people from all nations there. Yeah, and one that's man, not, that, that's and not, one, I'm not one, questioning that. What one, I'm questioning is that, that, or what I'm saying is that probably more so the people of Judea would have been the people who didn't hear the other tongues because they only speak one tongue. And that's what I'm just generally saying. That's something I never saw before. No. The, all of these people from any of these countries over here, when they were in Jerusalem that day, they were in Judea. And they were men of Judea. Yeah, but it says men just, of Judea. Yeah, I know. And, I know. And, 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 and they were in Judea. And I think that when he says those who dwell in Jerusalem, that means all the people from other nations. Because I think that's... That's, that's right. Yeah. The visitors. But see, but he says when men of Judea, so he's separating the two, and those who dwell in Jerusalem. So he's kind of separating the two, I think. That's the way I see that. I don't know. But a little minor point. It doesn't matter. Well, we both agree. We both agree that it is both certain. Well, certainly, there's people of all nations there, and not all. And nations, my understanding you know. is that every one of them heard the wonderful works of God. Well, uh, couldn't been because some mm-hmm. said they didn't. Some said they're drunk. So it couldn't be all the people that heard the wonderful works. No, they they heard it. They heard it. They just didn't believe it. And we get that all the time. If they, heard the, it, if they it, heard the wonderful works of God, they wouldn't be saying they're drunk. We, listen, that don't make we, sense. we have that happen in our churches all the time, even today. I there understand. are people who, who hear the gospel and they just don't believe it. Right. They yeah, can't. But that's, not what, that's not the context of this. I, 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 that's yeah, not, I think so it that's is. just people talking, and this is obviously... There's something they think they're, they're, they're not speaking normal language. You wouldn't call someone drunk who's just speaking normal language. Well, if, you if it was a different language, language, if it was a different language than the one you spoke. I don't buy that for a second. Uh, you don't have to buy it. I don't it's buy okay. It. Well, if, it's a, if you don't understand it, yeah, I agree. If, they don't, if you don't understand what they're saying, then yes, you might think they're drunk. It's yeah, because you, because but you, there were other people there from other countries who did I, understand that's what, what I they am, were saying. Suge- that's what I am suggesting, I, that the people of Judea would have th- understood those other languages. Just a couple of days ago, and I have fun doing this. This is, this is a, a, the most fun I have in, in retirement is playing with, uh, with uh, a salesman who called me on the phone trying to sell me some. Yeah. Uh, and and I had a had a fellow call me. He wasn't trying to sell me anything. He he wanted me to take a survey. 
and uh, and and included in that survey was he wanted to know, uh, uh, the, and this was several questions down the list, and so therefore it seemed funny to me that he asked me uh, what language did uh, we speak in our home. Was it? And then he listed off eight different languages, and he wanted me to choose one of those and tell him. Well, one of them was English, but I didn't say English. I said, we speak pig Latin around here. Oh, <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> and that kind of frustrated him, and so he said, no, no, I need you to pick one of these eight, and he listed off those eight. And oh, he, when he got through the second time, I said, we still speak pig Latin around here. And so then he just went on to the next question. Maybe he won't call you again. Yeah, I, I asked him. I said, "Me taking this survey is this gonna is this gonna put me on some list where I'm gonna get a bunch of surveys?" And he told me, "No, no, no. This is this is uh, strictly for the use of." And he introduced himself properly and courteously at the beginning that he was calling on behalf of the University of Texas at Tyler. But after I had gone through the big Latin thing and asked him about the, uh, if this was going put to me, put me on the list, he said, no, 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 this is just going to be used by the University of Tyler, Texas. Is so it because of the woke agenda? Oh, it's going to be used by, wow. it's all, it's well, all the woke no, 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 did you, did you get what I said? Yes. At, the, at the beginning, he said it was the University of Texas at Tyler. Uh -huh. But after I went through the pig Latin thing, he said it's going to be used by the University of Tyler at Texas. <laughs> so I don't know if he was trying to speak pig Latin or what, but he was that's, a, that's all part mind, of the book agenda. That's why they ask questions like that because they. I don't all, take them surveys anymore. They have they have an agenda. I usually don't either, but when that's I've got right. nothing else to do. Yeah. <laughs> What, it's yeah. like asking what, what title you want to be called, Mr. or Mrs. or yeah. things like that. Yeah. That those kind of things, it's just well, pure that's, nonsense. Let's pray right quick. Lord, we're thankful today for your goodness to us and your mercy to us, your blessings on us, for the opportunity we have to gather with our friends and read your word and talk about your word. We thank you for that. We've come here not only to learn about you, but to worship you, and we're going to worship you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, who indeed is our Savior. Amen.